God bless you guys. You know, you guys came out on a Friday night to worship God. You know, all things are given to you by God. Every, it says here in James chapter 1, verse 17. I'm just going to read a verse and, you know, get into prayer. But it says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. That means God never changes. Through the Old Testament, through the New Testament, He never changed. And every single thing you have in your life, from the place where you sleep, to the parents, to the people around you, to this place that we're, we're here tonight, all of that is a gift. Every single thing is a gift from God. The chest that you can breathe with, the fingers on your hands, it's all a gift from God. Everything good is a gift from God. And I just want to say, you know, God bless you guys. The fact that you're here acknowledging that God is real and that you're actually taking a step of faith for those of you that don't believe, God bless you guys. And God is looking down on you and smiling. He loves the fact that every single one of you here came out tonight. And you know, I just want to pray for you guys, Lord. I just thank you. I thank you so much, Father, for everything you've given us. I thank you so much for the people who don't know you, that you've brought here tonight, Lord God, because we know that nothing is a coincidence, Lord. We know that every little detail of our lives is engineered by you and your glory, Lord God. We just pray for the people who don't know you, who need your help, who need healing, who need your guidance and your strength, Lord God. We just pray that you enter into their hearts through this word tonight, Lord God, that you enter into their hearts through your presence, Lord God, that you just open up their inside of their hearts, Lord, just come into them, just unveil what they need to hear, just fill them with knowledge and wisdom and strength and guidance, Lord God, I just thank you for everyone here, Lord God, I pray that you continue to work in their hearts, to stir us up, to keep seeking you, Father God, I just thank you, I'm in awe of your greatness, Lord, and I know we all are, Lord, I just thank you so much for breathing life into us, for breathing your Holy Spirit down on this church, Lord, I just thank you so much for filling our youth with passion, with, with desire to seek your holy name, to seek you, God. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much for the people here. Thank you so much, Lord. Jesus, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
now we're gonna, we're gonna be collecting our offerings tonight. And uh, before we do that, I just wanna share a little bit, you know, uh, a few songs so we can just, you know, be prepared for that. You guys are still coming. I want to share a few thoughts about uh, on the subject of giving. Uh, if you remember last time I was talking about giving, and giving is uh, one of the most important aspects of the Christian life. Uh, the, every, uh, every Christian meant to be a giver, first of all. Because, because God himself was a great giver, right? In John 3.16 we read that God gave his only begotten son. So God is the greatest giver. And, uh, and we meant, as a Christian, meant to be givers, okay? So just to briefly remind you of this. And this is very important for us to put it in the practice. And practice these things. And, um, you know, one of the... We have to understand that how we can practice it, you know, how we can put this as our lifestyle. Uh, there are a few things that we have to know. And one of the most important things to, uh, that we have no, not only know, but understand is that God owns everything, you know, wherever you have all possession that you have all money, you know, everything you have, God owns it, you, you know what I mean? So basically, um, like, everything you have, God, is God, you know, give, gave to you. If we just open up 1 Chron Chronicles 29, 12, 14, and it says, There was a time when David uh, was collecting offerings for the for the temple of God, and there was a you know really great events happening that time. So let's just read: wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give thanks to all. Now, you God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I? And who are my people that, that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only that comes from your hand. So basically it clearly says that everything, everything, everything comes from God. And, and wherever we give, we basically give what God gave to us in the first place, right? So if, if we understand that, it's going to be really easy to, for us to, you know, to be givers as God meant to us to Okay, so let's just, um, let's just stand up, let's just uh, take our offerings and uh, let's just pray. We're going to be praying in Russian. Господь, я благодарю Тебя, Отец Небесный, за каждую руку даятеля на этом месте. Я благодарю Тебя, Господь, за каждого, кто дает сейчас на этом месте. И я прошу, Господь, сделай, Господь, просто э, дай нам понимание того, э, кто Ты, какой Ты был даятель, и какой Ты есть, Господь, чтобы мы могли быть такими же, Господь, чтобы мы могли последовать и быть, Господь, и просто идти за Тобой, и давать, Господь, так, как Ты хочешь, чтобы мы давали, Господь. Я просто прошу Тебя, Отец Небесный, благослови каждую руку, которая здесь, кто дает, кто верит, Господь. А, благослови все эти работы и, и места. Просто, Господь, благослови а, все семьи, Господь. Пускай будет благословение Твое на них. Аллилуйя. Я молюсь, Господи, во имя Иисуса Христа. Да, Bible. I think we have a few that we could spare for now, for this time, while we're here, and then we'll see if, okay, one, two, eight, three, four, okay, Andrew, do we have any, I think there are a few in the closet, can you check, and can just keep your hand up if you need a Bible, so uh, somebody's gonna, Natasha, can you please help and just, yeah, thank you. Yeah, just just yeah, wave at, at Natalia and she's going to come and get you the Bible. Thank you. 
All right. Any, anybody here for the first time with us? Can you wave at me if you are? Anybody here for the first time? Anybody? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? What's your name? Calvin. Calvin. God bless you. Thank you. Nice to have you here with us. All right. And may the Lord bless you abundantly. Yeah, I hope so. Absolutely, man. He has blessed me. He's going to bless you too. I'm no special. All right? No doubt. No doubt about it, right? God bless you too, my brother. Nice to have you. Yes. Wave, wave. Yes. What's your name? I'm sorry. Louis. 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 God bless you. Let's give it up for you. Okay, so um, we're just going to go right into the word, okay? I do, however, want to ask you uh, if it's possible on your behalf. I believe it's a very important word. I truly, truly believe in my heart that it's a very important word. So please, if you can stick it from beginning to end. I'm going to try not to take too long. However, you know, <laughs> if it does turn out that way, don't leave just because of the length of the sermon. Try to stick it through. Can you do that? We'll try. Well, please try. All right, because I do believe that it is important, important word that that uh, I have tonight to share. I shared it previously already, not in youth, you know, and uh, I know it has blessed people. Not only that, that's not the reason why I want to share it. That's not the only reason why I want to share it tonight. It's, it, this word comes from my heart, and, and, and I believe it's going to be an answer to some of us here, hopefully to all of us. Do you know that God's word does have answers? Amen. That's why we approach it. That's why it never gets outdated, because it has answers. Relevant answers to present problems, situations, circumstances, issues. God's word has the answer. Amen. Amen. That's why we read this Bible. That's why we read it. From the time we come to Jesus until the very last day of our life, hopefully we read this Bible. Why? Because it carries answers. Some run to different professionals, which also has its place in our lives. But ultimately, the Word of God has the answer. Amen. So uh, with that in mind, we're just going to dive into the Word tonight and share on the topic of finding my place in God. Does that excite you? All right? Okay. Who wants to find the place in God? It's important. It's very important. It's a critical, it's a crucial question. To find the place in God. Let's open up. Deuteronomy 28, 13. Kevin, you Jew man? No, Christian. Christian. All right, so you should know that. You should know Deuteronomy then. No, I'm not worried, man. We're one of us. Then. That's cool. Then Deuteronomy chapter 28. Just, you know. If, even if it's, you know. Who's Jewish? Any Jewish people in this place? God bless Jews. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the Torah, the fifth book of the Bible. This is it right here. Every Jew better... He better hear, hear can, like the Bible says, unto the word of the Lord. This is a powerful message to us, the Jews. Amen. The Torah, the law of the Most High God. So in this particular chapter of 28, that's what we're going to look into. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Famous chapter, okay, that deals with the subject of blessings and curses. All right, and uh, the question is this, and it's important. Okay, your answer will determine your readiness to receive this word. But this is a simple question. There's a reason for me asking it. How many people want to be blessed in their life? Whatever this word communicates at this particular time for you, but whatever definition you have on it, you know what, it just sounds good, right? I mean, it's good to be blessed. And none of us would want to be cursed, I would assume. It is my hope that none of us here present in this place would want to be cursed. How many know that God is there to bless us? God wants to bless us. Therefore, you want to be blessed, hallelujah. And God wants to bless you. So in this particular passage of the Bible, he communicates the list of blessing and the list of curses. 
We're not going to look at the curses tonight. All right? We're just going to look at the blessings. However, it's interesting and I find fascinating that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's a long chapter with many verses in it and a lot more is given, a lot more space is given to list of curses, not blessings. I think that God wants us to be extra careful how we conduct our lives to avoid the pitfalls. But we're going to talk about the blessing, and you know, the blessing of the Lord is like a shining diamond that is very rich, that has many cuts and different sides to it. And any place of approach, any angle you take to take a look at it, it's going to reveal its beauty. Any place, from back, side to side, somewhere in the middle, it's going to be that still that shining beauty. Amen. Amen. So, but we're not going to look at the whole diamond tonight. Why? Because we simply don't have time. Even if we're going to be here until Sunday straight through without breaks, I highly doubt that we would be able to cover the depth of Deuteronomy chapter 28, list of blessings. But we're going to touch one aspect. And this is the aspect. 28, 13. Let's read it together. All of you that have your Bible, read it together with me. And if you don't have a Bible, share with, some, with somebody that does next to you. See who has a Bible and just sit close to them and look at it and look what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. The Lord will make you, right? The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give to you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do you like that? Tell me. Does that excite you? Is that a good promise? God says, I will make you the head and not the tail, and you will always be at the top and never. Say never. Never, never as far as God is concerned about us, in the bottom. Say always. Always, always at the top. Always. That's God's desire for us. He reveals his plan. He reveals his heart towards us and concerning us in this particular passage. I don't know about you guys, but I love it. It excites me that this is such a God that we deal with, that is there in pursuit of blessing me. Me. And only I know me to the core of it. And I keep on surprising me every day that I live. I'm like, is that in me? Still in me? Oh, Jesus. And in spite of that, God wants to bless me. And he wants to bless you. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It sounds pretty good, but the question is this. What does it mean? This sounds pretty nice, but it's pretty abstract. We want to be more specific. Well, he's going to make me a hat, not the tail. But what does it mean? Am I going to be, be just a walking hat? And somebody's just like a tail? I'm always on the top means that the people that are walking past me on the streets, non believers, they actually, they're, their legs they, and their feet, they touch and the ground and the pavement upon which they're stepping, and me, I'm flying on the clouds. I'm on the top. What does it mean to be the head and not the tail? To be on the top and never at the bottom. To be blessed and not cursed. In his book, Derek Prince, there is a minister, was a minister, a teacher of God's word. His name was Derek Prince. Very powerful teacher of God's word. There is a classic that he wrote discussing, you know, in depth this chapter 28 of the book of Deuteronomy. The name of the book is this, and you can check it out, and you know what I suggest for you to check it out. I'm not a person that recommends many books to read, however, this particular guy, I can suggest to you to check him out. Derek Prince, and the name of the book is this, Blessing and or Curse You Can Choose. You see, we get to choose. Blessing or curse, we can choose for ourselves which one we want in our life. And as hands were shown, I would assume that all of us on the blessing side. This is what he says. In his book, he says this uh, thought that when, as he read this passage, he asked God this question. God, the question that all of us are supposed to ask God as we read his word. That's a good question. This is the question. God, how this particular verse, 2813, applies to my personal life? How is it relevant in my particular case? And then he says, I felt God has given me the answer. And he writes, that hat is what you make decisions with. With You are in control of the situation. And the tail is just a part that is just, just waves and turns 
different sides, right and left, and that's about it, based on the circumstances that are surrounding it. Do you understand? So he asked the question, have I, have I managed to make decisions with my head not being controlled and manipula manipulated in my life by circumstances? Was I at the top of my game, in other words? Do you understand? Because that's what God wants for us in our lives. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. The head and not the tail, quickly. From the biblical account, from the biblical testimony, God always deals with the head. Say amen if you understand. Amen. Do, you not, do you understand? It is the head that he fashioned and designed in a such a way that four out of the five senses, natural senses, they are located in our head. Smell, sense, taste, and, you know, ear. I mean, we hear, we see four out of five. The only touch, the touch natural sense, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't just necessarily stay with the head. My hands can touch and so forth. But four out of five natural senses are located right here in my head. God, when he came, he created the first individual and he breathed life into his mouth. It was the head that he breathed his life into. Amen. When a person is being released into the ministry or blessed, usually the hands of the eldership are being laid on the head and not on the tail. Amen. God is blessing the head and not the tail. In every family there is order and a headship that God designed. For example, husbands are to, uh, Christ is the head of the husband. Amen. Any husbands in this place? Not many, but we can say amen. Yeah. Christ is the head of the husband. Husband is the head of wife. Alright? The wife and the husband are the head of their children. And the elder children are the head of the younger children. And the youngest child is the head of the past in the house. <laughs> so if you want to be in a blessing and to be the head and not the tail and you're the youngest in the family, this is what you do, get a hamster or something. Exercise your authority. <laughs> Okay, a bird, uh, you get something with a tail, a bird would do, uh, you know, a dog, cat, and so forth and so on. But you see, God has established such a beautiful design. Amen. Now, there comes a point and a moment in time in our lives when we become the head. You see, God said, I will make you the head. I will make you the head and not the tail. You see this Deuteronomy 28, 13. Look at this. I will make you. I will make you. It's a very important thought. Do you remember the prodigal son story? Who remembers that? Who recalls that? I think in our plans of reading, it's today's. Who read the, you know, the, what, the plans for the Bible year reading plan? I think it's today, Luke 15. It's actually that story is there where Jesus shares the proverb about, about prodigal son. That beautiful Story. Who read it? Wave at me so I know. Prodigal son. Luke 15, prodigal son. Anyway, we're not going to go into this, but for those that did read it, remember what happened. The father was rich and the son, he wanted his share, his portion of the inheritance. Now, technically, the inheritance would go to children when father dies. I mean, that's the way it is. There's a will, father dies, and whoever he writes this will you know, to receives that inheritance. But son didn't want to wait. So he said, he came to the father and he said, Father... Give me. That was the, the words that came from his lips. Father, give me a portion of my inheritance. So father gave him the portion of his inheritance. And then son went to the far land, a distant land, and he just squandered his wealth. He just totally blew it on the wind, a wild living and so forth, and he became in need. He was wanting, and he didn't have means to cover it, to meet his needs. He couldn't even feed himself. That's how bad he has fallen. That's how low he has become. And then he was hired to the lowest of lowest, to shepherd so forth uh, 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 pigs, you understand? So he was in such a low state that he looked at the pigs, and the Bible says that he would want to actually eat what they ate, but nobody gave. And at that time, he remembered that he has a father. And he came back to his senses and he said, let me go to my father. So as he came to the father and he approached the father, these were the words that came from the lips of prodigal son. Father, I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your servants. 
there's something happens, you see? There's something happens in between. I don't know for us people what we really have to go through to understand that. Hopefully not the same what the sun had to go through, being near the pigs. Hopefully we understand it beforehand while we're still in the Father's house. But there's a difference between give me attitude and make me attitude. So God says, I'll make the head and not the tail. Now, it's an interesting Hebrew word. I'll make you. That word make you in Hebrew is either Nathan or Nathan. Like that. That's, that's the word. Who speaks Hebrew? Please tell me. Make me. Just say Nathan, right? That, that's it, right? Good. Nathan, right? Nathan. Okay, they, okay David confirmed. It's Nathan. All right. Nathan. Nathan or Nathan? Nathan. Nathan. Make, right? Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> so, so anyway, I looked up in the, in the strong concordance and the study of this word. And this word in Hebrew, very interesting word. And I want us to get this tonight. You see, if we want to be made by God, shaped by God, formed by God, if we're not afraid for his hands to touch us and to make us, to change us, and to actually, you know, so we can fulfill his purpose, it's a very interesting word. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. So this is what this word actually means. Besides its obvious meaning, this is what it means. It means to fix at a certain place. It means to bestow, to appoint, to apply, to ascribe, to assign, to commit, and to fasten. Do you understand? This is what it means. I'll make you, I'll fasten you, I'll fix you at a particular place in my purpose. That's what it means. Right there, you're going to be as a head at a particular fixed place that I purposed for you. Do you understand that we as Christians need to be in the right place at the right time? Say amen if you understand. Amen. Us as believers, we don't believe in coincidences. We believe that God governs our life and every little detail is actually from Him. At least He has it for us like that. Not sure if all are walking in alignment with that. Amen. But this is the purpose of today's message so we can and will be able to do that. Amen. So he says, I'm going to fix you at a specific place for a specific purpose. When God gave Moses, we go with the explanation of this word, nata. When God gives Moses design how to make a beautiful priestly garments, Aaron, the high priest and his sons, they were assigned to the priestly duties. They wore this beautiful garment. This is not your Dolce Gabbana piece. This is not Hugo Boss, guys. Talking about 12 gems, beautiful precious stones encrusted right on the chest right here. Talking about golden plate on a turban that says holiness unto the Lord. We're talking about our Father, our Daddy in Heaven has some style. <laughs> this ain't no, you know, little bit of sw Swarovski, whatever Swarovski. <laughs> High priestly garments. It was top of the fashion, if you will. It was a beautiful piece. A beautiful piece of cloth that priest, the high priest, and his helpers were supposed to wear. So when God gives design to Moses, because everything was supposed to be done according to the plan that God revealed to Moses. Amen. Everything had a specific place and a purpose. So the same word is used in Exodus 28, 14, when he gives them explanation how this particular piece of clothing is supposed to look. So he gets to the part and he says, two braided chains of pure gold. How do you like that? Mm -hmm. Like a rope and attach the chains to the settings. That word attach the chains to the settings is the same word. Nothing. Make. Fix them at their particular place. Do you understand? Fix them at the place that is ascribed specifically to these chains. In a specific place. Specific material. You see, with us, it's the same way. With us, God is very specific. Do you understand? He's not abstract at all. He's specific with us, his people. He says, I'll make you. I'll make you, I'll fasten you in the position of the hat. I'll fasten you, I'll fix you in a certain specific place. Very important 
to understand. This is what he means. In other words, if you're gonna keep my word, do what I tell you to do, if you're gonna listen and obey me as we read in Deuteronomy 28, 13, I'm gonna fix you in a specific place of my will. Specific place God has for you and he has for me. And dear brothers and sisters, I'll tell you this. There is no better place in the whole universe Amen. than the place that God has for me and you. Amen. 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 Listen to this. We watch National Geographic. We are just amazed at what we see. We watch different documentaries about space and we are amazed at what we see. But can I, give, can I be honest with you? None of that can compare in its beauty, in its design, in its perfection to the place that God has for you, even if it's a mansion that stinks. But if it's God's place, it's the place, it's the most Amen. beautiful place. Amen. 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 Very important to realize that. That there is no better place than being the center of God's will. It's not the easiest place, but the most rewarding and blessed place. The most rewarding and blessed place is the place of the center of God's will. God is saying, I'm going to make you happy. You're not going to be tossed and turned to and fro, side to side. You're going to be fastened and fixed. You're going to be rooted. You're going to be strengthened in a particular place of my purpose. Just like those cords in a priestly garment. You're going to have your place. Just like every piece in the furniture. I mean, in the temple. Every furniture in the temple. In the everything that had to do with the worship of God. Everything was assigned and ascribed. Every piece to its place. Amen. Can I tell you something? We are the temple of God. That's what the Bible says. And all of us has a place in God. Hello? Yeah. We are the temple of God. They could not put those chains on some other piece of clothing. They cannot put them in another place however they wanted it. God had a purpose in mind and he said this is what you do because that's the way to be blessed. I want to make you. I want to make you. I want to place you where you ought to be placed. And sometimes the court says on that garment, why am I not a stone on a breastplate? I want to be a stone. I want to be a gem. What is this? Just a little pity, you know, little pity, 24 karat golden chain. I want to be a stone. I want to be an emerald right here in the center. And the emer emerald says, no, 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 forget about that. I want to be that black wholeness unto the Lord that everybody could see me that could just blink and shine as the sun shines on it. That's what I want to be. But you know what? If God assigns us somewhere, that's the most blessed place. Amen. Amen. That Paul, he uses that analogy, and he says, we're all one body, but we're different members. And can the ears say, why well, I'm not the head? I mean, why well, I'm not the, the, the eye? But if everything would be ear, what would we have? <laughs> can you imagine the picture? That's how I used to pray, remember? We let a home group, and a lady came to me and says, but how do I pray? I don't understand, what do I visualize? And I said, lady, and just, you know, I said, listen, this is how I used to pray when I just came to God. I just pictured a huge year, like a chamber, and I would walk into this. And I'm in the year of God. God bless this day, God help me, you know, do this, do this, help me, do this, help me, quit drugs, okay, bye. Wow, so you see God like one ear. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, that, that, that used to help me. Sort of like visualize. Obviously, he's not a ear. He's God. But, you know, I just used that, you know, visualize it to help me pray and see God at the beginner stage. Amen. But it's a pathetic picture if you, look, if you think about it. Because why? There is a body, beauty of it that God designed. And every part and every member and every cell has its place. Say, my place. My, my, place. Place. my, place. my place. God showed me my place. God, show me my place. Amen. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you. That word, you see, appointed you. I made you, I fixed you as such. I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. And that your fruit will last. You see? You see, the fruit bearing is closely tied up of me being assigned and appointed. If I am not where I am, I'm going to be fruitless. And the Bible says that I can glorify God only if I bear much fruit. You see what I'm saying? And the fruit's supposed to last. That's why I'm not going after quick fixes. And, you know, big things that are just, wow, 
out the splash and then nowhere to be found. There was a revival, the guy led the revival, everybody, you know, dropped everything, went to the revival, next thing you know, the guy is totally off the scene, ran with his sick secretary, had sex, for, for you know, just uh, betrayed his wife and the family after big revival. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because people don't realize. You don't jump to quick conclusions. You wait and you see. The Bible says, look at the people who finish their faith well and follow them. It's very important. It's not about just the newest thing out there, newest brand, because Jesus says, I'm going to make sure to come and check if it remains. Because that's what I'm concerned about, passing it from generation to generation to generation to generation, that it will be remaining. Amen. We have to be wise in that regard and understand how God operates. You see, apostles, they did their job. Apostles done well. Because what one of the things that were entrusted to them is passed to us the word of God. It has been 2,000 years. And you know how I know that they done well? Their fruit remains. Everybody in this place tonight has, has a Bible. You know why? Somebody paid their price for it. They fought for it so it could reach us. Their fruit remains for 2,000 years. That's what I'm talking about. But he says, in order for you to do that, in order for you to be fruitful and bear fruit, you got to be appointed and you got to be fixed, made by God at a certain place. Does it make sense? We're going to go forward. God's desire is to make us the head. Now, I want us to look at the scripture tonight. At the life of the patriarch Jacob. Say Jacob. Jacob. Who knows Jacob? He's Israel. The same. Anybody wave at me who knows Jacob, please. I need you to see, I need to see how many people know Jacob. All right. Jacob is a great guy. I love Jacob. I love his character. I love his story. It's very rich. It carries a lot of revelation. It's a beautiful man of God. So now, let's shortly look tonight at his life. Because in his life, listen to me carefully, there came a moment when God would call him to return to his place. Say his place. We're talking about place assigned by God in my life. We're talking about we want to know what that place is and we want to get there. We understand that nowhere in the whole universe there is a better place than the place assigned by God to me. Amen. So there was a moment in the life of Jacob when God told him, I want you to go back to your place, to your land. And the time has come for Jacob to take the possession of that land, of that place that God purposed for him to have. To position himself as the head and not the tail. To allow God to position him where God wanted. Let's open up Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. We're going to read first two verses. Bear with the story. We're going to read first two verses. Jacob also went on his way, and the angels say his way. Okay. And the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is the camp of God. And he named that place place David. How did he name it? Machanaim, Machanaim, tell me. Machanaim. All right, guys, I want you to hear this. He, he named this place Machanaim. All right? He, why did he name that place Machanaim? Because there was a camp of angels, a company of, I like that, Machanaim. So here's Jacob walking. Not even, you know, kind of having these things and thoughts because, you know, he's about to meet his brother. It's a whole other story. We're going to touch on it in a little bit. And all of a sudden, he finds himself in a place called Machanaim. That's powerful. The angels of God, they surround him. The question is this. Look what it says. He went his way. It's very important. Jacob went his way. My question to us all tonight, which way did he go before that? Or whose way? Let's dwell on it. It specifically says that Jacob went his way. But whose way did he go before that? 
God's way? No. His way to his place, absolutely. He went his way and he went to his place. But whose way did he go before that? I'm not going to give you, uh, leave you clueless. We're going to look in the word of God for the answers. It's all right there. There are two passages that explain whose way and in which place and whose place Jacob dwelt prior to going his way. All right? Let's quickly check it out. It is... Genesis 29.1. Genesis 29.1. You see, before that Jacob might have walked his way, he might have not. Okay, your way and your place is the place where God wants for you to be. Say amen if you understand. Amen. Somebody else's will not do my place and my way that God has for me. Establish that fixed and assigned place in his purpose. Now, so look at Genesis 29.1. Before leaving this place he was entering it 20 years before that and look what it says 29 1 genesis jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern people you see whose place it was it was the place of eastern people it was not jacob's place later on look, look up at genesis 31 55 31 55 i want you to look it's very important and we read, early in the morning, Laban arose, Laban was a father-in-law of Jacob that became father-in-law over time, and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Whose place was his? He before, he was in the place of each sons of, of the east, and he was in the place of Laban. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? He was in the place of Laban, sons of the east, but it was not his place and it was not his way now you see to get to the yeah we're gonna we're going there i'm just be like i said bear with me tonight because it's a very important subject and you're gonna see why it's very important it's very important you're gonna see why so now it was the place of laban and eastern people and jacob found himself in this place because of the life circumstances that accompanied that happened to be there Anybody remember the story? Jacob technically lied to his brother. He took the blessing that actually belonged to his brother. Long story short, brother finds out, wants to kill Jacob. Jacob runs for his life. Pretty bad circumstances. So you know what? At that particular moment, you ask many questions. Which way? My way? Your way? God, listen, I'm just running for my life. This is it. It doesn't matter at this particular point. So the circumstances were so pressure, you know, they pressured me so much that I didn't care, I didn't ask the big philosophical questions. I just fled for my life. And life circumstances and occurrences, that's where they led me, to the place of the sons of East and Laban. Amen. Now, I believe, however, that God was the one orchestrating the whole thing. I believe, however, that God allowed for Jacob to be in that place. Why? Because it was necessary for Jacob to change. Say change. 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 It was necessary for Jacob to grow up. Say grow up. It was necessary for Jacob to mature, say mature, mature, to leave the childish ways behind and to become a man. A man. A man. God allowed for Jacob to be in a place that is not his because it was necessary for Jacob to be there because Jacob's character was at stake here that God was working with. Do you get this? Very important. Interesting enough that we read in these chapters when Jacob lives there for 20 years in this place of Laban, not many uh, supernatural occurrences take place. I mean, it's technically just a routinely life. Work, family, throw out the garbage so your wife wouldn't yell at you. <laughs> Messing with the father-in-law because he doesn't like him, nor there's no mutual like. All right? You know, so it, just a basic stuff, routine, you know, in and out for 20 years. Only one instance. While Jacob remained in the land of Laban and the sons of East, there was only one supernatural in instance, and this is what it was. Angel came to Jacob in a dream and gave him sort of a plan how to increase his livestock. That was it. Out of 20 years, that is it. Imagine that. So it was just a message. Well, of course. But that was it. Now, as soon as Jacob started going his way 
to his place, the first thing that happens, Mahanaim, company of angels surround, you see? Now, not only that, a couple of verses later, God himself shows up and wrestles with Jacob and talks to him face to face. And he blesses him and he gives him new name and new identity. He said, you are Jacob, which means deceiver, but I'm going to make you Israel, the prince of God. I'm going to give you a new identity. All of these things begin to happen days within him departing from Laban's place on the way to his place, say my place. My right away things begin to store up in an amazing way. The presence of the supernatural is there. Hallelujah. Angels are there. God is there. Then he has a problem. There is actually a brother that, you know, still there's unresolved issues from the past. That brother was, you know, the one that wanted to kill him. 20 years past, Jacob is still in paranoia that the brother is, you know, hasn't forgiven him. So he tries to send gifts to the brother somehow to soften his heart. But what happens? The brother comes to him and it's like as if nothing happened. You know why? Because God was already... He was there. He was protecting Jacob. My brother, listen, we'll talk later. Yeah. He was protecting Jacob. And what happened? The Bible says that if your ways are pleasant to the Lord, he's gonna, even your enemies are gonna be reconciled to you. That's beautiful. You see what I mean? Why? Because he went on his way. And all these things began to pick up the supernatural, the angels, the God, the forgiveness. Reconciliation with the family. Things started to actually pile up in order. Is it important to be in your place? It is important to walk in your way that God has for you? Say amen if you understand. Amen. And eventually, Jacob reached his destination and he arrived at his land, at his place. The place that is now called Israel. Interesting enough that Jacob is Israel. God renamed him and gave him name Israel. And this place today, till this day, for 4,000 years, carries his name. Why? Because it's his place. Because God said it. And nobody can take that away. You see what happens? What a glorious thing when we are obedient to God. Tell me, does God know what he's doing? Everything went fine, and he became happy and a blessed individual. There were problems. You know that uh, Jesus never promised us if we're going to live with him, he never promised us that it's going to be a problemless life. Life without any trouble and tribulation. This is what he said. I'm not going to take away all the problems from you, but I'm going to be there in the midst. I'm going to help you. My perfect peace will sustain you. Jacob didn't have it all sweet and in pink colors. As soon as he reached the place, even though he was very blessed because it was his place, the greatest place to be, you know what happened? He lost his wife, his beloved Rachel, that he loved dearly in that place. In that place, he had problems with his children that was constantly at, actually, there was this antagonist, there was this war in between them. Then he lost, or he thought he did, his younger child, that he loved so much, Jacob. For many years he was actually, I mean, sorry, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. For many years he was away from the father, and father all this time thought that he was dead, and own brothers, his own sons, done it to him. Then afterwards, it was an immigration, 72 people, the whole family, to a totally different distant land of Egypt. At an old age, not that easy. But Jacob endured everything. And he completed the race, and he reached the destination, and he was a blessed person, because God was with him, and he was with God. Okay. All right. That's good with Jacob. Jacob, we got under, you know, we got it covered. We got him covered. The question is this. What about us? What about you and I? How do we get to our place? How for us to come to the place where God is going to fix us? I think a couple of sermons going at the same time. Guys, pay attention, please. How can God place us and fix us where he wants us? Think about it. Do you have that answer? 
Huh? With asking him. Asking him, all right. How else? Tell me. What else? Any Pray. other? Praying. Asking is praying. Okay, move. By honestly seeking him with all your heart, and then he shows you. All right. Okay, honestly seeking him with all our heart, and then he will show. Yes. Not only asking, but listening. Not only asking, but listening. Very interesting point. Julia? Trying things out and seeing what was best for you as well. Mm, okay, that's pretty extreme, but all right. Okay, my sister. Fine. I got you, because you, you, I know you. All right. And anybody else? Any other ideas? It's good. It's good. How do I? I mean, you know, this guys, this sermon is not about Jacob. It's about you and I. I mean, this is what we want to get to. We want to get to us, how we fit in this picture, in the story. We don't want to be left out. We don't want to live our lives just signing the great life that Jacob lived. We want to live that life. Hallelujah. I want to live that life. Because I believe that Deuteronomy 28, 13 applies to me directly. Just as it was to Jacob or any other believer at that. How do we do that? Okay. We all want to be the head, right? Yeah. We all want to be above, right? We are... Uh, want to be in our place, not somebody else's, right? Wave with me if you're with me. Right? Hallelujah. The Bible says, like a bird that wanders from its place, from its nest, is a man who wanders from his place. It's a terrible, terrible picture. So there is a possibility for people to wander from their place, like a bird leaves its nest. The bird needs the nest, and the nest needs the bird. But people not discerning what happens. They wander off their place, like the bird from its nest. Now, do you believe that God has a place for you? Yep. Yes. Wave at me if you do. Specific place. Specific place. The question is this. That's what we have. How do I get there? How can I be fasted in a place where God has for me? How? That's the question that we need to answer. Alex, how? Ask the youth pastor. Hmm? Ask the youth pastor. <laughs> I'm going to tell, thank you, all right, I'm going to tell you, I prepared it, actually. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no, he's real, and put it in our life. Okay, Jacob said, let me go to my place and to my land. Thank God for obedient people who are able to hear God. We go to the Corvette. Who to are able to hear God and perform and submit to Him and walk in obedience. But it's very important to discern and recognize if it's God who I heard. Amen. Do you understand that? I know people, personally met them in my life, that actually with the zealous, you know, pounded upon their chest with a form in, you know, at their mouth, was saying, I know it's God told me. But later on, as I see time goes by, there is neither fruit nor the remainder of that fruit. Okay? So I see that the appointment or appointing or fixing or fastening that they thought was taking place by God, it was a question because Jesus said, I appoint you to go bear fruit and that fruit shall remain. Amen. So now, it's very important to understand what God has to do in this. It's very important, and I believe that the Bible gives us principles and insights and spiritual laws. If we follow them carefully, we will not lose. Again, we go back to the Bible. All right, so do you believe that it's a set of laws, guys? Spiritual laws. Spiritual laws. We have three sermons happening at the same time. Spiritual laws. The Bible, right? So if we're going to look in the story of Jacob, let's see what we find, how we can get to the answer. First and foremost, first and foremost, say, you want to be in a place God has for you? Yes. Okay, 10 minutes ago it was yes. Now it's already... Do you want to be in a place that God has for you? Yes! Hallelujah! First and foremost, what you need is this. Mark it down. You need to hear God's voice. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> That's a best. What? Serious? Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that? You thought she's gonna go to a local deli, go so somebody's gonna communicate the will of God to you? <laughs> or another conference is gonna say, <laughs> 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 Come on, guys. Oh, no, no, no. Or the campus harvest. First and foremost, you need to hear God's voice. Yeah. 
very simple, very profound, needed. Look what happened. You gotta make sure that God, I believe Jacob was able to make a transition to his place, was this. He heard the voice of God. God told him in Genesis 31, 3, go Jacob, leave this place and go to your place. Tell me, how is it possible to hear the, word of, the, the voice of God if I do not discern it, if I'm not used to hearing it? How can I even recognize it's God? Do you see the dilemma here? I mean, the Bible says that the devil comes as an angel of light. In the same manner, even more and purer, I believe, with this shushi mushi mushi type of approach. The Bible says that the words of an adulteress are sweet as honey. Ooh, it's honey, man. And then go to the inner being of your gut right there. Nyam, nyam, nyam. It's better than anointing oil, better than the Holy Spirit himself. Nyam, nyam, nyam. The perfume, the goosebumps, the... That's the words of an adulteress. How can I discern? The Bible says that the Lord's word is like honey in the innermost beings. You see how two things are very much look alike, similar. So in order for me to know my place and go there, first I gotta hear God. Say to hear God. Yeah. How can I hear God? This is what Jesus says. Mark, you know, write it down in your notes. John chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. This is what he says. When he, talking about himself, brought out his own as a shepherd, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Say, never follow a stranger. Never. You see, the, the, the feature, the significant feature of the sheep of Christ, the sheep hear his voice and they will never follow another. In fact, they will run away from the stranger because they don't recognize the voice of the stranger. You see what he means? He says it is very much possible to hear the voice of our shepherd. You know what? Not only possible, it is absolutely necessary for our preservation and for us to get to the place that is ours. Amen. Jacob could respond to God's call and the reason for it is this. He heard his voice and he obeyed it. If I don't hear the voice of God, I cannot make another move. Hello. I mean, I can make many moves in 10,000 different directions, but the question is, where am I going to end up? And for how many more years? Just another Laban? Or another sons of the East, West, South, and North? I want my place. Amen? Amen. Guys, this is an interesting thing because Deuteronomy connects this very thing. The blessing of being the head and not the tail. God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. And this is what he says, one of the conditions it carries, this is the condition, if you hear my voice and carefully search to obey it. Amen? If you hear my voice and carefully search to obey it. This is of utmost importance, this is the foundation of everything we talk about, my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Hello? Guys, if I'm not cultivating it in my life, if, not, if I'm not seeking the face of God, Guess what? There's a big possibility that I'm already off where I'm supposed to be. It doesn't mean that I cannot get back on track. It means the sooner I do it, the better. Because every time I withdraw a couple of degrees from the course, and the longer I go away, the further and the longer it's going to take time for me to come back. I don't want that. So tonight is the night to determine whose voice I'm going to hear and who I'm going to follow. personal relationship, where I spend time with Him. Where do I spend time with Him? In His presence in prayer. We all covered that a little bit. Guys, this is how we do it. Quickly, Psalm. This is how David done and I believe it's a prescription to us all. Psalm 17, verse 15. Psalm 17, verse 15. Seventeen and verse fifteen. Look what it says. Look what it says. I love this. Hallelujah. I love this. And I in righteousness will see your face. When I awake, when will I see your face? 
When I away, guys, underline that. Not before you go to bed when the day is gone and done and you cursed at everybody that you shouldn't curse and you got mad with everybody and you did all the things wrong because you weren't instructed in the morning. Because morning we were too busy to run and do our things, live a routine type of life. I got to do this, I got around there, I got to take care of that. And then I'm incapable of dealing with the temptations that come my way. I'm not ready. I didn't make myself ready. I didn't spend time with God when I was away. When I away, very important, I will seek your face. And this is what he says. I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness, your image. Other word in Hebrew, I'm going to be satisfied as you fill me with your favor. Your wisdom is going to guard me. Anything that will come my way, I'm going to be, I'm going to have ability to actually dismiss from my life. I'm not going to buy into that. You know, like I said, the, the kosher fish that had, you know, it had two significances, you know, like two features. This, they had fins and they had scales. Those fish we could eat as Jewish people in the Old Testament. Now, now everything can be eaten, eatable, you know, because God says it's being blessed and cleansed with prayer. But the kosher fish, it was the fish that was considered to be kosher with fins and with scales. You know why the fins are eaten in our lives? That's kosher to have fins. As we navigate through life, this is what happens. Devil, he take a pole and he goes, Whee! and you know, here it is. And here it is, and here it is, and different circumstances as I'm going my way throughout my day. There she is. Ooh, look at that booty. There he is. What are you showing me? Papa, I'm trying to get the dead, the dead. You see, I react. You know what happens at the time? <laughs> Why the fins are there? To maneuver my way. Ah, huh, devil. No, 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 no. Not this time. I refuse to look. I refuse to be angry. I refuse. I resist to be rebellious. I humble myself. I submit to the will of God. You're not going to get me with hooks. I maneuver my way in God. That calls wisdom. Where are we going to get that wisdom? Not from the, you know, from the, from the uh, burger or a nice snack burger. That's too far. Okay, from a bagel, everything bagel with cream cheese toasted in the morning. And then I'm running, I'm running for my day, reaching for my life. Life's goals that I set for myself. <laughs> Not even realizing. Here I am. Stepping out, think like I own it. <laughs> That's it. Why? Didn't acquire much wisdom in the presence of God to be able to maneuver my way through. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the scales for the kosher people are this. You know what it is? To keep the bacteria from my life. Sin from my life. No, Cheshire scales. The scales all over. To protect me like a breastplate of righteousness. From bacteria. David said, I'm going to seek you in righteousness. Yeah. A lot of times we don't run to God. You know why? Lack of righteousness. Mm -hmm. We feel guilty. We feel condemned. Yeah. And God doesn't want us to feel that way. But we do because sin wants us to feel that way. But if there is no sin, the Bible says, if my, my heart does not condemn me, I can approach the Lord because if my heart condemns me, God condemns me more. Not in the sense of condemn, condemning, but he judges me more. Why? Because he is bigger and better than my heart. If my conscience can discern between good and bad, how much more can God? And I understand that inside. That's why I don't make it my effort to run to Him. Why? No righteousness. So what do I do? I stop with the nonsense and I ask God for forgiveness and mercy and become restored. It's simple as that. I run to Him and say, not give me so I can spend it on sin, but make me. Hallelujah. Amen. Where, where does it take place? In the prayer room in a secret place with him alone. Amen. 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 You know why I believe Jacob was able to make a transition? He heard God. He knew his voice because he cultivated personal relation with him. So when God said go, there was no doubt it is him. I know him too well. I know it's him. Quickly, uh, Proverbs chapter 8 is going to help you. Chapter 8. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, talking about the wisdom that we need. Look what it says. 
at the end of the chapter, verse starting 32. Look what the wisdom speaks. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. How many of you need wisdom? I need wisdom every day, in every decision. I need wisdom from God. I am too weak. I'm not, you know, I'm not there. I need wisdom in all these decisions. I'm still young. I'm still forming. I'm still shaping. I need wisdom. I don't want to fall prey or casualty to somebody else's wicked devices. I need wisdom so God can sustain me and get me safe to the place where I'm supposed to be. And look what the wisdom says. Verse 34. Well, let's go 32. 8, 32, Proverbs. Now then, listen, my sons and daughters. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man. Say blessed. blessed. Is the man or woman, boy or girl, who listens to me. What David says. Who listens to me. Watching daily at my doors. Do you see? Watching at my doorway. For whoever finds me finds his life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. And all who hate me love death. So what do I do? Every day, at the start of my day, I set an alarm. So I can wake up half hour early. Hour early. And I come and I say, Wisdom! Wisdom! I know it's early, no, but I'm here. I mean, hello? God, I'm here at your door. I'm being watchful. I know I'm here. I need some coffee. Bye, 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 bye. That's better. Wisdom. I'm struggling with this. Father, I got this, and I know I got to break tight with this, but Lord, I, help me here. Lord, give me strength here. And I'm, this day I'm facing such things, and, and I'm going through something. I'm going to meet with somebody. Can you wisdom guard me? Can you give it to me? Amen, amen. I find it. I seek for it. Let's see. Yeah, if I'm going to tell you right now that there is a sum of money buried under this wooden floor right here, and I would leave, I don't know what some of the brothers would do. You would tear this place down. Why? Because there is a monetary value, and you know that it's there. So what are you going to do? You're going to put so much effort into finding it. Guys, what about God's wisdom? Excuse me. That's already of no value in our lives? <coughs> Serious? Yeah. yeah. The gossip magazine has to teach me more than God's word? Since when? Since when that became? Or talk or chat with somebody is going to actually exchange my personal time with God? Never. Never. That's why he puts such emphasis. Not a day, let not one day go by aside from you seeking me. And those who seek will what? Amen. It's a promise. That's why Jacob was able. Why? He knew the voice of God because he spent time with him. And as the time goes by, I begin to discern what's God and what's not. Say amen. amen. That's the key. That's the key. Without it, don't even aim for success. You're not going to get it. Without this, it's a guaranteed failure. I'm telling you. Great men of God that cultivated their relationship with God, they did great. As soon as they stopped, they fell into iniquity. And they just men. And we don't blame them or judge them. Any of us could be there. And any of us will be there if we stop seeking His face. When I awake, I'm going to seek you, my Lord. Before my mind is polluted with the world's news, with how many people died in an earthquake, before my mind is polluted with Facebook gossip, before my mind is polluted with all of that nonsense, my, I just go afresh as I awake to the presence of God. God, God, I'm here. Receive, put and download the data into my spirit, whatever you have to say. Download me, download me. More, Lord, I need you so I can face the day. As time goes by, you're going to know the, the voice of God. You're going to be discerning the voice of God. Because it's going to become familiar. Second, very important thing, we go quick, is this. So we discussing how to get to my place, all right? How to be made by God the head and not the tail. Be fixed and fastened at a specific place in my destiny and calling. First, relationship with God, seeking His face daily. Second, be faithful in someone else's, and then God will give you yours. Amen. 
Be faithful in someone else's place and God will give you yours. Amen. Amen. What you mean someone else's? Be faithful in someone else's and God will give you yours. That's, look what Jesus said. I'm going to, how about this? Look what Jesus said. Luke 16, 12. Look what it says. If you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, whether God or man, the Amplified Bible says, who will give you that which is your own? Is that simple? If you haven't been faithful in another's, who's going to give you your own? Your own. Your own. Your own. Amen? You see? Look, God will not give you yours until you're faithful in somebody else's. Say faithful. Faithful. That's another thing that's required. That's another thing that is necessary for me to be made the head and not the tail, to enter and to be fixed where God wants me. I know those dreamers, man. They dream about such a great destiny in God, yet they cannot be faithful in a little, you know, like a little, little nail right here. And to me, it's a funny picture because it goes directly against what the Lord speaks. Hello? Never could God violate His word. I don't care who you are, even if you are His cousin. <laughs> He's not going to violate the word. Even if you got it like this with Him. Yo, 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 me and Jesus forever. Check His word. It's going to determine how forever and ever you are there. Amen. Look what happened. Look what happened. Genesis 31.6. Look at Jacob. It's amazing, amazing. Before he went to his place, before he was fastened by God, made the hat. Look what happens. 31.6. Genesis. He says, you know that I've worked for your father, talking about Laban, in whose place he was. With all my strength, say all my strength. All my strength. You see the type of commitment he had? And then, look what he says. Yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. Yet, he says, all my strength I put into this thing. For your father, it's not my place, it's his place. But I was faithful. Amen. 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 Look what it says. Interesting that in spite of trouble, he says, in spite of all the mistreatments, in spite of all the bad stuff that your father has done, this labor has done, I put all my strength. For 20 years, I served with all my heart. He cheated me, he lied to me, but I was faithful until the end. You know, he was there, and he was a blessing to this man, individual, you know, Laban. He worked for him for 20 years. Can you imagine the length of time? 20 years, that's a long time. And he says, I put all my strength in this service. It amazes me how some, again, young individuals, they dream about ministry. The dream about the big things of God. And yet I'm like, are you with somebody? No. Uh, do, you have, do you have a pastor? No. Not necessarily. Oh. Well, you gotta take some Jacob lessons. Amen. Let the brother Amen. teach you. Amen. Let the brother teach you. Amen. Let him explain to you how it's done if you want to be the head and not the tail. Amen. Amen. Look what he says. For 20 years, I worked. Some people barely attend church and they dream about big finish. <laughs> TBN is waiting for me. China, I see millions getting saved. Yet Jesus told me, well, I don't doubt he's told you. I don't doubt that. But it's a big question whether it's come to completion because it, it is determined by the second point. Are you faithful in where you are today in the stinky Brooklyn? In a little church that you're in. Amen. 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 Yeah. I mean, let's keep it real. Can we a little bit? Seriously. See, why would, would I mislead you? Let's have sober approach to the scripture. Let's not, not wander in the clouds. Look what else he says in the same chapter concerning his faithfulness to another. Verse, chapter 31, verse 38. Look what it says. A few verses we read. I've been with you for 20 years. He's talking to Laban. 
Your sheep and goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten rams from your flocks. I did not bring you animals torn by wild beasts. I bore the loss myself. He covered the expenses that he didn't have to. And, I, and you demanded payment from me for whatever was stolen day by night, by day or night. This was my situation. The heat consumed me in the daytime, and the cold at night and sleep fled from my eyes. It was like this for 20 years that I was in your place. Do you see? It's talking about guy, the guy was completely devoted. The guy was completely solid. The, the guy was faithful no matter what. He says the heat, the, you know, the cold, nothing stopped me. I was faithful, I determined. It's not like he was there for 10 years. The first, you know, it's 20, but the first 10, he's like this. He's hard working and this and that. He's like, look at this dude Laban. Man, he's iffy dude. Man, I know I'm in this place and all, but this is just funny business. I'm, I'm gonna catch this dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he didn't harbor bitterness inside his heart. He didn't harbor unforgiveness. He was there even throughout all the mistreatments because God was in it forming him and preparing him to enter into his place. Amen. 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 Never, never, never cast away mistreatment if you face it. Deal with it God's way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Forgiveness, blessing, that's the key. Even in the midst of it all. You see, how many people, 20 years, the patriarch is talking, the man of God. How many people, oh boy, today, they've been in church for two years and they're ready, that's it. I disagree with the pastor. What is he talking about? Like, you can talk more. Wow. How long have you been a pastor? Yeah. Huh? Oh, oh, you, oh you, you read pastor. Ah, oh, I see. You watch the pastors on TV. I see, all right. Nonsense. Guys, do, do you understand? This is nonsense. Walk in the shoes. Be the Jacob. And then be on your way to the blessing. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Heat. Cold, that nothing stopped me. I was faithful. Say faithful. Faithful. You know why Israel was wandering for 40 years in the desert? You know why? They were getting ready to enter into their land, the promised land that God has given them. They were not ready. That's why God said you cannot enter in such a condition. A lot of times we're not ready to enter into the, step, the next step that God has for us. We want it, but we don't understand that once we're going to get there in this condition, we're going to ruin the whole thing. You see, our measures are incorrect. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, they're like, uh, they're like uh, some, uh, some housed, housing developments in some areas that are not so pretty and nice. They didn't start out like that. Some housing developments, they were actually beautiful houses with a brand, you know, fresh paint, beautiful uh, 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 renovation done, nice uh, area, streets are clean. Then certain people enter and live there. In a year, it becomes a mess. In a year, like you could see cans on the street, people are drugged up, people are, you know, they, they're drinking alcohol, they're on the streets, and it's just, you can see that nobody takes care of this place. So that goes to show me, they were unable. And you know what, they weren't supposed to be here in the first place. Why? Because the place was given to them as a blessing, and they were to cultivate it, to keep it, and to make it even better. But instead, mentally not ready, spiritually not ready, they make this place worse. <laughs> With Israel, the same thing. God said, listen, if you're going to enter in such conditions to the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, you're going to actually make a mess of it. So I want you to be ready. That's why the 20 years of preparation in somebody else. And the last one, and we pray. This is going to be very quick. When Jacob left, this is the third principle. So what we learned, if we want to get to our place and be blessed by God, be had not the tail, fixed and uh, fastened in the place God has for us, what do we need first? See God. Yes, every day. Second, we want to be faithful in where we are. Amen? Yeah. I think that we got to wrap up quickly because it, it's too much. I understand. All right, so um, look, third. When Jacob left, his father-in-law was not happy, and he actually, you know, he didn't want to let him go because Jacob took his daughters and his grandchildren and the livestock, and simply Jacob was a blessing to Laban, so he didn't want to let him go. So Jacob left without telling him, without telling his father-in-law, the person that he worked for for 20 years, without telling him he left. So then Laban said, listen, where's Jacob? What's up? His servant said, he's been gone already for three days. 
He's like, what? How in the world? So he took his servants, his men, and he pursued him. Seven days later, he finally caught up. He says, Jacob, what are you doing? Why, why are you leaving me? And you know what? Interesting enough that while he was on the pursuit of Jacob, those seven days, one night God appeared to Laban. This is what he says in the dream. Laban, do not tell to Jacob anything good or evil. Just let him go. This is what God said to Laban. So Laban, once he approached Jacob, he couldn't say nothing, even though he didn't want to let him go, but he knew it was from God, so he couldn't resist. A lot of times, we are so afraid that we're going to lose our place in God, that we don't accept advices from nobody, thinking that they are potential threat to our freedom and spiritual life. Amen. Guys, Laban then blessed Jacob and everybody that was with him. Jacob went without blessing, but God permitted for Laban to catch him up and bless him. Why? Because any move I make with God, in God, further, no matter right, right left, back, not further in God, wherever he wants me to. You know, there is a scripture in the Bible that says like this, a cord that has of three strands is not easily broken. Who knows that scripture? Amen. Ecclesiastes 4.12. Usually we use that scripture to actually apply it to marriage life. And it's true. You know, husband, wife, and God is a three strands, the cord that is not easily broken. However, God has many of those cords throughout, throughout our life. This is one of the cords in my life. This is the cord. Check it out. I'm, I'm sharing this with you. My personal heart. My insight. The cord is this. God's word. My conscience. Bears witness within me. And the word of my pastor. Or a leader that is assigned by God in my life. Amen. 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 Cord that is not easily broken. And I'll tell you, anything that has to do with the will of God in my life, if one of those components are not there, I wouldn't make major decisions concerning God's will for my life. Do you understand? You are not there already. I'm, I'm losing you all. All right, come back to me. Just for another second. Guys, does it make sense? The greatest decisions that I made in my life were made for me. It breaks my heart to see rebellious individuals because I know that it's a, such a delusion. It breaks my heart when young people live their life however they think is right and put in the name of Jesus on the top of that. Not advising, not obeying, not listening, just going wherever they want to. They think that their parents, they think that their pastors, they think that older people are too old, what can you tell us? It's a new time, new generation. And to me, I'm like, I understand. It doesn't end nowhere good, that attitude. I know God is not behind that. I want to be in God's best place for my life. I got to hear his voice. I got to be going by his principles. One of this, which was in Jacob's case, is this. Faithful in somebody else. And then God, God's going to give me my own, whichever it may be. And the third one, I got to be a person that seeks counsel and advice and don't do things independently as I think is right. The Bible says, wage your war in a multitude of counsel, and that's going to be victory. Multitude of counsel you want. You see? Laban, he blessed them. That blessing was needed. Because nowhere, I mean, you wouldn't want to go in your life without blessing. Tell me, if you get married, do you want blessing of your parents? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happens if the blessing is not there? Is it potentially a threat to your marriage? Yes. Amen. Do you want a blessing of the pastor if you do something ministry related? Yes. Yes. You don't want to do it just sneaking and thinking that you got it better. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. You see what I'm saying? We want to be blessed through the channels that God established in our lives. These three things was going to help us to become the head and not the tail 
I think we've done it for tonight. Let's pray. <laughs> Guys, I, I told you that it's going to be long, but you are the champions, can I tell you? You are the champions. May God bless you. And uh, did anybody understood anything at least? Who did understand anything? Come, we want to pray for you. Kev, come, we're going to pray for you. Come here, man, seriously. I'm here, I'm here. I'm no, I know that you understood, but we I just want to bless you. I don't, I don't really like to be in front of people like that. I mean, oh, yeah. whatever, man, come. Come. <laughs> We're just gonna like this. Yeah. We want to say yes, sir, right here. Yeah. 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 We're just gonna bless you, right? right. 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 Do you want to receive Jesus? Of course. Uh, I love Jesus with all my heart. I love it, man. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. So we should yeah. just just to, to make sure that to confirm it. You're not. I mean, just to double check to hit it, the control one. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, that he's yeah. with Jesus. All right. So, so we're gonna pray together. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. pray together, right? We're okay. just gonna pray. I don't really pray. I don't know how to pray. I just pray. Like, I don't really That's talk. Cool. I just, I just, you know. Right. But you're gonna repeat after me. All right. No right. It's no vow to me and so forth. It's just to Jesus. All right. Thing. I hope right. so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we're gonna pray together. We're gonna help Kevin here, right? Anybody else want to accept Jesus? Anybody else? Bro, you good? Good. Yeah. Ben, good, all right. Because I want to see you here more often, man. Because see you come, man, I just don't know that it's Jesus. All right. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just pray together, right? Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, come before you. Come before I come before you. Thank you. Thank you. For your love. For your love. For your kindness. For your kindness. For your mercy. For your mercy. For your truth. For your truth. Forgive me, Forgive me for all the sins, all the sins that, I've that I've committed against you. Against you. I, repent. I repent. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Whether I understand it or not. Lord, I pray that you give me revelation, wisdom, and knowledge to discern your will. That you may give me courage to act it out, to perform it, however you would like. Lord Jesus, without your help, it is impossible. So I call you. I call you alongside as my helper in the time of trouble. I ask that you may sustain me and that you may fill my life with your purpose, your meaning, your power that I can carry it through. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless him right now, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are here for him, Lord, that you're touching him, Lord, that you are just filling his heart and his spirit right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you may just come, Lord, and, and fill the space within, Lord God. I pray that your presence may be experienced and felt, that you would never leave, Lord God, anymore, and that he would be glued to you, attached to you forever from now until eternity meets the end, Lord God. We bless him, Lord. We bless him. Let him be the head and not the tail, always above and never beneath, never below, Lord God. Let him walk in your wisdom, Lord. Give the ability to hear your voice and to obey, Lord God. Give the inner thirst and hunger to seek you, Lord, every day, every day, Lord God. Give the hunger for your word. Let it be explained to him, made plain to him, and let it be just accepted by him in Jesus' name, inside his heart and the innermost being, Lord God. We bless our brother. We commit him to your to your hands, Lord God. We speak against every curse that's been in this life, Lord. I pray that you may break it in Jesus' name, Lord. And we just deliver him into your hands, the mighty hands and powerful. Lord God, let the enemy let loose and let go in Jesus' name and let him completely belong to you, Father God. We just we bless him tonight, Lord God. All the things that are unresolved tonight, we pray that you may resolve them, Lord. And every cord that is binding him, Lord, we pray that it may become loose in Jesus' name. Jesus name, let your power come, Lord, let your freedom come completely, Lord, in every sphere of life. We commend them into your lovely hands, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
just lift your hands like this. Father, bless us, Lord. This word that we heard tonight, Lord, I just pray that, Lord, you may bless us, Father. I pray that it may settle within our spirit, Lord God. I pray that it produce much fruit, Lord God. I pray that we would not be uh, resistant towards it, that we would not stand in opposition, Lord God, because you did say that you give grace to the humble, Lord God, but the proud you oppose. So help us not to be on that, that same company with the proud people. Lord, we're here because voluntarily we made the choice to follow you because once you touched us, Lord, in a significant way, and we don't want it just to be there on that level. We want to continue to go and grow further until we reach the place, Lord God, the destination, the next level of our development and our ministry and life with you, every sphere of our life. So, Father, I bless your children, Lord God. I pray that you may release your wisdom, Lord God, and the seeking of your spirit and your face every day, Father. I pray, Lord God, I pray that your spirit may continue to communicate with ours and that our eyes may be open, Lord God, the eyes of our heart may be enlightened, Lord God, to understand and discern your will and, Lord, to carry it out. In Jesus' name I pray. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We bless all those in our lives, Lord God, that you put in authority, those people that are side by side with us, Lord God. We bless the pastors, Lord God. We bless our parents, Lord God. We bless our older brothers, Lord God, and sisters. In Jesus' name, our bosses and teachers and every person that is there designed by you to bless us, to make us better. In Jesus' name, Lord God, let all the bitterness go. Let it be removed from within, Lord God. We forgive. We let go. We bless. Even as you've forgiven us, Lord God. We don't want to harbor any bitterness. We don't want to be upset, Lord God. We just want to be rejoicing, Lord God, on our way to heaven. Lord God, in a cheer spirit, because you're with us. Because you are ours and we are yours forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.